So today we're talking about a big new idea for redesigning the rail intersection at Churchill Avenue in Palo Alto. And joining us is the originator of that idea, Palo Alto resident Mike Price. Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. So you proposed a design uh, for the intersection to compensate for when Caltrain's going to run more trains uh, down the corridor, which would create enormous traffic jams beyond what's already there. Uh, and this is a process that's been going on for a while. I thought, Janati, we, we could start with you just to give us kind of the context, quick summary of the grade separation saga. Yeah, the saga's been going on for a few years, and it's, uh, the council's trying to kind of bring it to its conclusion by the spring, which may or may not happen. They haven't been great at beating deadlines in the past. But um, they basically had about 37 ideas like two years ago, and they've been gradually trimming down the list, and they got to about seven until a recent realization that the seven that they have aren't great, particularly for Churchill, where uh, the right-of-way is pretty narrow, so some of the dramatic um, proposals would have like big property impacts. Yeah. So uh, we had a story about that a few months ago by the Churchill Crossing and the different opinions um, on that. Yeah. And so this week, the council basically uh, brought in Mr. Price's idea. They agreed to add it to the list of those being studied, mm -hmm. which is kind of unusual because they're expanding the options, but mm -hmm. um, it's seen as a possible compromise after getting pretty negative feedback to the other two, two right. options. And also unusual to have a resident um, idea be taken up by... Um, the council and put into the process that we should say that, that it's not the only idea. There's also one for uh, Charleston and Meadow proposed by Elizabeth Alexis. Which is also a road underpass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's turn our, our attention to this idea. Um, and when did you first start thinking about the need to propose something different than what the city was considering? Uh, it was probably at one of the um, community meetings they had this summer. Okay. They uh, had laid out all the alternatives and started looking at them and listening to the comments. It was clear that no, that there wasn't going to be no consensus on what to do. And given the the various objections to the plans, mm -hmm. that some of the previous plans. One's closure of Churchill. One's closure. One's the uh, viaduct. Okay. But before that, there was an underpass and a hybrid and a tunnel and a trench, <laughs> um, and they were all rejected for a variety of reasons. Yeah. And where we got down to these last two is pretty much. A, a punt because you just couldn't find a solution. So it, it, mm -hmm. it started at that point, I started thinking that there might be an alternative mm -hmm. and just started thinking about it. Yeah. Are you kind of a top down? Uh, uh, does, we should say you're an electrical engineer. A top down problem solver or bottom up? Top down meaning like you looked at models out there and just kind of thought this one could work or did you start with a specific problem that needed to be um, solved? What I did was trying to understand what the, the community's requirements were. Mm -hmm. There were objections about property takings. There were objections about uh, Caltrain had objections about moving their tracks. There were yeah. objections about viaducts in people's backyards and so on. And yeah. thinking that those are the requirements. Can we meet all of those by rethinking the whole thing? That's yeah. that's really where I, how I approached it. Yeah, it's a pretty complicated problem, though. I mean, have you designed intersections before? No. <laughs> 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 so, so did you think, oh, this is kind of crazy, but I'm going to do it anyway, or what was your kind of... Well, it just struck me one afternoon. I was just thinking about it and I said, well, why, why are there going to be property taken? It's because we're lowering the roads. I said, well, what if we don't lower the road? I mean, just start thinking about it mm -hmm. each, each step of the way, and I came up with, well, let's lower half the road, see how that works. And then it just you know, came from that. So what was the response you received from some of your neighbors? Because obviously, as we report, a Southgate has pretty... Um, you know, pretty strong opinions and pretty varying opinions about uh, this particular grade crossing. Um, well, some of the neighbors were interested in not closing Churchill, so any alternative they thought was a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, with, uh, there's a group over on east side of, of uh, Churchill mm -hmm. who I met with some time ago, and they, were, they agreed that they, that, that they didn't want to have their properties taken. That was their primary yeah. objective. So it just seemed that initially said, well, that's interesting because I'm not taking your, you know, you're not taking my property. So this is a, perhaps an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some people who are just passionate about closing it and some people are passionate about opening it. And mm -hmm. you know, at some point there needs to be a compromise. And that's really what I was trying to come up with. Was find a solution which is sort of halfway this and halfway that. It's nobody's going to be perfectly happy, but uh, maybe nobody will be perfectly unhappy either. So that would be a, go, a win, in my view. Yeah. We should point out that the XCAP and his December meeting, which includes P 
people from all points of view on this issue. The expanded the, the, community yeah, advisory. Yeah, the, yeah, they voted unanimously to advance this and okay. uh, recommended the city study it. So early signs are that the compromise is kind of working, but yeah. obviously a lot of analysis remains to be. Made. Yeah, let's let's tell people what the design actually is then, as best we we'll, we'll uh, insert uh, mm -hmm. pictures of it as well. But let's describe. So the idea is to uh, keep the intersection open mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, and to separate the bike and pedestrian from the traffic as much as possible, okay. uh, and to avoid taking any properties, okay. uh, leave Caltrain where it is so Caltrain won't object, and don't build any big structures which are going to be ugly and unsightly in people's backyards and so on. That was the, 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 the goal. So what we do is we turn Churchill into an underpass underneath the tracks that terminates at Alma. So the people coming from El Camino can turn north or south in Alma, but they can't drive through on Churchill. Like a T. Like a T intersection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on Churchill coming west, they come up to Alma. It's also a T intersection, um, but you can only turn north because the, the, the intersection, the rest of the intersection will be below grade, so there won't be any connection there. Mm -hmm. By leaving one lane on Alma at grade, the, the, the east side, the northbound right-hand lane, uh, then all the, the properties along Alma still have access to their, to their driveways, so they don't have to take those properties. Of course, not doing anything to the east side of Churchill, so we're not taking any of those properties. So we avoid the property taking on that side. And on the other side, we do the same thing. One, the right-hand lane of, of, of uh, Churchill is kept at grade so you can get to Mariposa and the houses along that part of Churchill, but the rest of the street is lowered. Hmm. So what you've done is preserved about three-quarters of the, the traffic flow patterns in, uh, at the intersection without taking any properties. And that's really, you know, the, the gist of the plan. Yeah. Was there an aha moment when you were coming up with this plan? Well, I think that the, the idea sort of gelled when I was up in uh, Hillsdale, because El Camino at Hillsdale Boulevard does exactly this. Oh. There's an underpass, or El Camino passes, you know, half of El Camino passes underneath Hillsdale, and another, uh, the right-hand lanes, stay a grade and terminate on Hillsdale so you can make left and right hand turns. You say, well, that's interesting. It's just splitting the road. That's a, that's, that's a good idea. So. Yeah, I've seen that in my hometown also in San Francisco and yeah. Geary, like in the yes. Fillmore area. You can stay in the right lane and go to the Fillmore, or you can dip under it. Uh, yeah. And it's interesting. I think both this idea and Elizabeth Alexis' idea for Charleston, uh, they each kind of they, they each go under the tr under the tracks and don't move the railroad. And I feel like this last meeting, for the first time, we're starting to hear this narrative from council. It would be a really good idea if we leave the tracks alone. I feel like before, it, like when we're talking about criteria, you know, cost is part of it, so it kind of indirectly that's it's related. But they explicitly kind of, I feel like this week established the fact that the fact that you're not moving the tracks is a huge advantage. Was this part of your thinking in designing this, uh, getting a solution that does not move the tracks? Yeah, because Caltrain is going to object to a lot of different things, uh, and it's going to be very hard to build tunnels and viaducts and berms and things Get without getting their approval. And uh, it would be a lot easier if we just avoid that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we're leaving it alone, don't, don't worry. Chill. Yeah, there's always, there, there's always kind of been this uh, curious uh, question of the sort of roller coaster effect that we're expecting the trains to go on right. somehow. Yeah, uh, let's talk about cost since you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Is it, it, there's many things that need to be estimated. Um, was that part of your thinking? Like, do you know how much this would cost? I have no all? idea, but I did in investigate a few um, underpass construction techniques, huh. and I think Elizabeth found one also where you can you construct the underpass with the train in with a, while the train is operating. Wow! <laughs> Essentially, can construct the the bridge and you, you disrupt the train maybe for a day or two here mm -hmm. or there as you mm -hmm. put things in place, but you don't have to build shoe fly tracks and like. Which I think is also a big win if we can pull that off. Yeah, because shoe fly tracks would necessitate closing Alma or, or infringing. Probably because you have to Alma. move them over to over the to the side. Plus, it, it's additional delay. It's additional cost. Yeah, it's just a mess. So if we could avoid that, then it would be a big deal. Yeah. How about impact on traffic? Um, how, how do you determine that? Is that what the city is now going to do? I don't know exactly what their analysis of the plan will include, and I don't think the XCAP does either. That was in the meeting last night. That was one of the things they, they the other day, they asked, what, what do we, what's the next step? What's going to happen? And they're going to go talk to AECOM and find out. Yeah. But I think that if you look at the, the traffic flow patterns, most of the traffic, about 
two, over two thirds of it is going from Churchill on to Alma or vice versa. And about a quarter to a third maybe goes down Churchill. But most of that's headed for Embarcadero. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's a big win for the Churchill neighborhood over there because it, their, their street is now a thoroughfare. Right, and it's now yeah. become a neighborhood street. That's going to be a positive. And people want to go to Embarcadero can turn left onto Alma and go up to, and go, uh, to Embarcadero right. that way. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, did you have, I know you're an electrical engineer, did you have a learning curve uh, going through this? Did you consult with other people in coming up with your plan? Is no, I do a lot of mechanical engineering, building products. So, uh -huh. yeah, so I, I just looked at it as a, a modeling problem, how, how to model mm -hmm. the intersection. So we did, a, we did a 3D model of the intersection. Yeah. It just sort of fit, just to work. And then the, uh, the, the the requirements, the traffic, the, you know, the, the road design requirements, I just copied the intersection of uh, the underpass at Jefferson in uh, Redwood City. Mm -hmm. so that's a fairly steep, uh, one essentially a, a down and up in the block. Mm -hmm. And I figure if they can do it there, we can do it here. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wondering, uh, if you've been able to come up with this, how come the consultants didn't come up with this earlier? <laughs> Any ideas? Uh, we don't have the consultants here to ask them, but uh, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think as, as Mike mentioned, before we started this, uh, consultants do what you ask them to do. <laughs> and if you want to elaborate, uh, I, think, um, yeah. I, think, I think the list mostly came from the city and um, like the, uh, Josh Mello, the traffic division, and you know, they were probably indirectly tied to things that the residents were saying. Like for example, we really want tunnels, so the tunnels have to be in there. Mm -hmm. But the residents were only involved like indirectly. Mm -hmm. But I but I don't think the the city um, ever actually asked consultants, can you come up with creative ideas to solve all our problems? Yeah. And again, that's kind of open ended. Your idea. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is they were asked yeah. to do a, a an underpass design, so they did one. Uh -huh. and it has, so like in 2014 and, or so, the right. Hatch Mount McDonald Group. Okay. Right. And it has yeah. lots of impacts, but mm -hmm. they didn't go back and say, can you design an underpass that doesn't have those impacts? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's really that's what I've done is. is we don't want those impacts. Can we, do, can we modify the underpass design so we don't have those impacts? Yeah, here's the initial idea. What can we do right. to And I think they would have come up it. with something similar if you'd asked them that, to do that, but you can't ask them to do that kind of thing because they've got a fixed set of tasks to perform. Yeah, yeah it wasn't like a design charrette. It was more like a specific right. scope. Can you look at what the tunnels would be yeah. with 1% right. grade, with 2% grade that had these right. special parameters? Yeah. And, and just going back to, for a second to your mm -hmm. traffic question, sure. um, I, I'd be shocked if like they don't ask their consultants, Hexagon, to put this into the model. So I expect mm -hmm. to have that information. Right. And if by chance they don't and the idea advances, it would definitely be analyzed in the EIR. That would probably be the main thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't imagine this advancing without it. Like, traffic analysis and making sure that mitigations are in place. But yeah. I also wanted to Mike, ask Mike mm -hmm. about um, bikes and pedestrians, because we've been talking oh, a lot perfect. about yeah. traffic flow, of course. Mm -hmm. and for many people, a big priority, including for the council, is bike and pedestrian safety. Palo Alto High School's right there. Yeah, especially because yeah. of that town mm -hmm. country. And so, um, yeah. can you talk a little about um, the bike and pedestrian features of your proposed idea? So the idea was to separate bike traffic and pedestrians from the car traffic. Okay. Um, and we did this by building a separate tunnel underneath the tracks for bikes and pedestrians and a bridge over the Alma intersection. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, uh, bikes on Churchill, whether they're coming from Palo Alto High School or coming from El Camino, can go down. There's a bridge over Churchill, takes them into a tunnel. They go underneath the tracks and back up and across to a, uh, a, a crossing at uh, one lane crossing on the north lane of Al the right hand lane of Alma. The tunnel is below the lowered intersection? No, it's below the uh, tracks to the north. Oh, the tracks, of course, yes. Yeah, so okay. the, the tunnel has a ramp that's, you know, doesn't have a big slope on it because you're riding a bike. And, <laughs> and it goes down underneath the, um, the tracks to the north of the intersection and then comes back up and then crosses over the intersection on a bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, so at, the, so at, the, at that point you have to cross one lane of Alma, but that can be a, a, essentially a demand light. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't need to be a traffic signal there, probably. Um, and so you just have a demand light, people want to cross, they push the button, the traffic stops, and they cross, so it'll be fairly convenient. Yeah. And they never have to wait for any other traffic flow on the rest of the valley, and it won't interfere with the intersection. Yeah, and, and I would recommend that anybody who wants to see how this might look in the future, um, the, like Michael Chacon, the resident on Alma and Marcadero, did a great visual kind of renderings that, that were played at the council meeting that anybody could look at okay. uh, if they go back to that tape. Uh -huh. and I think we'll try to post some images, right? Uh, yes. With this. Yeah. yeah but I wanted to ask, uh, we, we talked about the kind of the fact that um, the community advisory panel and now the city council have all unanimously said, let's study this further. 
But, we, but as, as we meant, alluded to earlier, there, there has been some criticism from people who live right on Churchill who are concerned that by creating these new uh, pathways, even, even with, with limiting some turning movements, you're going to bring a lot more traffic uh, to, to basically to their homes. Um, I'm curious whether you think that's a valid concern. And I think it's a concern, but I don't think it's accurate because one-third of the traffic to the intersection approximately is El Camino traffic heading for Embarcadero or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And if there, that doesn't exist, that traffic is going to go down Embarcadero. Mm -hmm. So I think that the traffic on, on Churchill is not likely to increase, um, though it might, but I don't think it'll get much. We're not, we're not facilitating traffic flow. We're actually impeding it a bit mm -hmm. um, and redirecting a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I think the concerns about uh, this, turning this into a, some kind of a freeway is, are overblown. Yeah, yeah we but, have heard that term come up at the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but it's already a significant connector between El Camino and Alma, and the consequences of closing it would be far worse. Mm -hmm. Not just on the community, because all that traffic has to go someplace else, but on the neighborhood, because it turns the neighborhood into essentially a cul-de-sac with only one access mm -hmm. point. Now, you live in Southgate, and there's been a number of different um, opinions of various neighbors. As your idea, has your idea spread, and, and, and as uh, people have heard about it, what have you heard yourself? Uh, it's spread a bit. Um, I, there's not that many people who are really aware of what's going on yet. Okay. And there's a, a growing number of people who are aware that there's even an electrification going on. Uh, and, a, and another group of, is starting to understand the impact of this. It's, it's, it's just starting to percolate through people's consciousness. So we've got, got the early around adopters and, right now. Exactly, and I think we've gone around and, and, and tried to, to notify all the residents of the community that something's going on, you need to pay attention. Yeah. Uh, but they're just now starting to, to, to pay attention, so it mm -hmm. will be, you know, the next month or so, I think there'll be a lot of outreach to try to get people engaged. Yeah. Well, with the council's endorsement, that must feel pretty good for the yeah, work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I think that, that as, as Nadia mentioned, the, all, the all the alternatives on the table stink. Right? They, they, mm -hmm. They're expensive, they're disruptive, they, they're going to they're gonna take a long time to construct, and, and, and nobody really liked them. And so there needed to be some alternative. And I think that we've got now, with what Elizabeth has done, which I think is really clever, and, and this, some, al some reasonable alternatives that I don't think are, they're not going to be the most expensive alternatives that are being considered. Yeah. And so I think that in the end, we'll probably do that which is the cheapest, but also that it meets some kind of minimum requirements for maintaining traffic and pedestrian mm -hmm. bike access. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier in the show, the, the council is going through the process of winnowing down options that they've been doing for the last few years, and this week they've strayed and added a few. I'm curious whether you have any concerns about the potential delays this would create for the schedule, or if you think the city should move faster at eliminating other options that, in your opinion, stink. Uh, because uh, and I'm only asking because the city is competing for funds with Mount View and Sunnyvale, and so time could be an issue and they failed all these deadlines. I'm curious whether that's a concern. Uh, this has come up in the XCAP. Their, their opinion is that, and this is, I think, uh, the city manager was mentioning, that what we were behind the, the other cities, but we've caught up, because their process is not going as smoothly as it appeared to be going a year ago. <laughs> so we're now kind of neck and neck. So I think the, the, co the competition for the funds is now not, not the, really the driving thing, because we're not really that far behind, or maybe even slightly ahead in some cases. Um, but it, it, I, th I suspect that the, the city council will wean away from the, will, will, will prune out those options that cost $800 million because there's just no, there's no way the city is going to find the money for that. And I think so, so some of these ideas, like, like the tunnel, I suspect. The South Palo Alto Tunnel currently has go. a price tag of $1.2 billion to about $1.8 billion. Oh. Some change. It's, 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 still, it's still in the mix, those two South Palo Alto. Yeah, and, I, and I think it's because it has the advantages of being the least disruption to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, the price tag is not, I mean, in my opinion, I just think there's no way we're going to come up with that kind of money. So some alternative, which is a compromise, mm -hmm. but is cheaper, mm -hmm. is going to be required. And I think that that's really what, the, what Elizabeth and I are trying to do. So mm -hmm. here's something which isn't perfect. But it's much better and certainly a lot cheaper than what's being considered. Yeah. Um, when the council said they want to come up with uh, the preferred alternatives, is it, so that's one per intersection, and then those are going to be move forward to an EIR process? That, that's, that's kind of the idea. Okay. Although, in this case, they've eliminated the number of intersections they're studying. So presumably, the there's three. going to be something for Charleston, something for Meadow, and yeah. something for Churchill. Um, yeah. And nothing for Palo Alto Avenue until 
later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, spring, spring is amorphous, but that's still what the council is aiming for? Yeah, the Citizens Committee has an April 30th deadline to issue ah. a recommendation. Uh, and again, the, the council has been very consistent about pushing forward its deadlines when it fails to meet them. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's, since the options were so unpopular, it's possible the delay will actually speed up the process if it gets people to buy in in the front end. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't really put my money on them having a decision in May, mm -hmm. but um, that's at least still the tentative idea. Yeah. But what's driving the schedule is the desire to put a ballot measure on November's ballot. Mm -hmm. ah, I don't know okay. what's going to be in this ballot measure, but they want to put some kind of a ballot measure in front of the citizens then, so they do have to get some things done. Yeah, in order to get the funding in. Deadline. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, is there anything that we missed in our discussion about how this, the idea and how it came about? No, it, it's, uh, I think that everybody in Palo Alto needs to be concerned about it. And people in Barron Park don't really aren't, they feel disengaged from this process, but they're going to feel the effects of this along with everybody else because it's going to have an impact on traffic. Sure. And on, yeah. and, and on the future of the, of the city. I mean, one of the things that we're trying to do is not set separate the, the community more. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the objections to closing Churchill. It's another separation between the east and west parts of Palo Alto. Yeah, which has long existed already. Exactly. Yeah. So it'd be nice to not make that problem worse because over time, um, traffic is going to get worse because, you know, we, unless, unless there's some disaster, <laughs> you know, we expect the, that there'll be more traffic in the future than there is now. And we don't want to, you know, you know, tie our hands behind our back by constraining it over artificially. Sure. The engineers will save us. <laughs> of course, don't we always? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to add, I think Caltrain is coming to town next Tuesday to do a community meeting update about electrification. Yes. So if anybody really wants to learn, I will, I'll post some information with the story about this, but I think it's a, might be at Rincon Auto Library. I'll have to double check. Okay. So, but next Tuesday. Good. Evening. Thanks for mentioning that. Mike, thanks for being here. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Appreciate it. That wraps up this edition of Behind the Headlines. If you think there are other people who are interested in this topic, just go down uh, below and hit the share button and send it out through social media or email. And to keep up with this topic and other Palo Alto news, go to paloaltoonline.com. We'll see you next week.